um, welcome to our um, UKRI's Net Zero Digital Research Infrastructure Scoping Project webinar about our interim report. Um, so in today's meeting, we're going to introduce the project, talk a bit about the purpose of the report, its methodology and structure, and some of the key recommendations that have come from the report. Um, we're also going to talk a little bit about how to use the report, um, what are the next steps for the project, and then there's time for feedback and discussion. Okay. So the UKRI's Net Zero Digital Research Infrastructure Scoping Project. Um, so this is an image from the report, um, and it's about the different challenges that we face as we head towards creating our roadmap for achieving net zero. Um, it's been um, brought together by evidence that we've collected from our project partners across um, 19 institutions and also um, with um, uh, what we've been reading in the literature. Or rather I should say that this is, uh, in, we'll, uh, the results of our project will be further informed by our partner projects that we'll come to. Um, there are various challenges that we've noticed from power supply to consideration of carbon that's embodied in the equipment that we use. And that solutions to this are really going to rely on um, community action, effective leadership, and how we improve efficiency. Um, so what is a digital research infrastructure? Well, we think of that as supercomputers and the software that we run on computers. We think about it in terms of data. Um, there's a lot of data that's produced um, and that we use within UKRI um, and networks, how we move that data around. Um, it's also about people, people who use digital research infrastructure and developers. And it's also the devices that we use to access those um, uh, digital research infrastructure that's um, uh, provided by UKRI. So we think of emissions in terms of three scopes. Um, there's the direct emissions from um, uh, our resources that we own and control. There's indirect emissions from the energy that we purchase and also emissions from the value chain that's in terms of um, emissions involved with the creation of the equipment that we use, um, but also there's a value to um, the work that we do um, with our, the equipment that we have. Um, we consider within our project that if we only focus on the emissions uh, that we create or our energy, then we're really only solving part of the problem that we need to consider emissions from what we call scope three. That's the indirect emissions from the value chain. Um, so what's the project doing? Um, well, right now we're about to talk to you about the results of our literature survey that have come into our interim report. But the project is also very much engaging with our stakeholders. They've been giving us feedback on our report and giving us guidance as to what we should include. Um, we're also um, working with various project partners. Um, we had a series of Sandpit events in the spring in which we've uh, funded a number of proof of concept studies and some workshops. And 
the results of those will be feeding back into our uh, the reporting from the project. Uh, we also have a consortium uh, where we're connecting with experts and we're running a work to map what infrastructure we actually have. We can't make any changes until we know what we've got. And also considering how people use digital research infrastructure with the user behavior uh, survey. And finally, we'll be assessing um, funding frameworks and how we can use those to um, impact our journey to net zero. So the ambition of the project is to collect evidence to inform the UK DRI uh, investment decisions. Um, the idea is that the, we'll provide UKRI with an outline roadmap that will give us a route for achieving carbon neutrality um, for our digital research infrastructure by 2040 or maybe sooner. Um, and to enable the UKRI to play a positive and a leading role in the national and global transition to a sustainable economy. So where are we in our timeline? Um, so right now we're over here with the interim report. Actually, this was released in August. Um, and, and this meeting is part of that. Um, we've also kicked off a number of proof of concept studies. Um, they are going to be giving us some preliminary results at the end of the year with a, a workshop where we'll be sharing information together um, at the beginning of next year. And then finally, all the results will be drawn together in our final report in June 2023. So it's quite tight time schedule. So the interim report, um, this is where we share evidence that we've collected so far, and we're making some initial recommendations that can be used in some decisions that UKRI needs to consider now. And we're finding it a useful tool to help us um, join up with other initiatives that have similar ambitions across UKRI. So the methodology, we've taken an exploratory approach. Um, we began with recommendations from our advisory board and worked our way through the literature from there. Um, the survey, the literature survey is organized in lines of topics that have come up with an objective analysis of keywords from uh, different reports looking at sustainable issue, sustainability issues with net zero. Um, we had a number of uh, responses to our first order draft, and then we had an open review to our final draft. We've included um, some grey literature as well as evidence in our report following um, guidelines set up by the IPCC. And in the bibliography, the grey literature is clearly marked. Um, so the structure of the report, there's an executive summary, which summarizes the project's recommendations. Uh, there's a synthesis, looking at the key areas covered in the review, with links to more detailed discussions. We introduce um, context and the aims of the report, and then there's some background, which frames the, the wider problem and provides some contexts and then also key findings, which expand a bit more on the details that we've discussed in earlier sections. So our executive summary has a number of different themes. Um, so important to us is about building consensus and uh, leadership. I think these are very important in terms of having a sustainable uh, solutions to um, or self-sustaining solutions and, and uh, outcomes from this report um, in order to create the roadmap and deliver it. Um, and these include uh, technology and our capability, thoughts around efficiency and consideration about how efficiency might 
influence use of equipment. We'd like efficiency to lead to carbon savings rather than more use. Um, electricity supply is very important. Also um, the procurement of equipment and services, um, the role of estates and travel, and then what we do with the missions that we're unable to avoid and how we might finally build impact. So these are our initial recommendations and they're based on evidence from the literature review, um, but our evidence collection is still ongoing via various different means, including through sample projects with the final report due, as I say, in June 2023. So this next section, I've kind of looked at each of the recommendation areas, themes, and taken a, one or two recommendations from the report um, that do read the report to see more information on these. But in terms of building consensus, uh, there's a great capacity uh, within UKR the UK research community in social sciences, in arts and humanities, and in economics to understand the range of societal views on these issues. Understanding that where there's consensus, that that's opportunity for some quite rapid transition, but that where there's discord, that can block or even reverse some of the changes we want to make. Um, so it's really important all along this path to be aware of where we are in terms of society's views on these issues. In terms of leadership, um, we, we, it's important that we create a focal point. Uh, we can bring together uh, strands of activity across the research sectors. So we have some kind of coherent approach to delivering net zero. Um, and what we found is from our perspective, just doing it and sharing what we're doing is quite a useful start um, to bring together the disparate groups of, well, the variety of groups who are trying to address similar issues across UKRI. Um, then also the roadmap creation and delivery. Uh, we need to ensure that there's continuity of the activities so that we can assess what best practice is and then deliver guidance to people who are having to make decisions about funding and procuring and using digital research infrastructure. Now in terms of technology and our capability and efficiency and rebound, um, so it's important that we invest in technology capability so that we can deliver effective scientific throughput as the digital research infrastructure landscape changes. Um, in other words, make, be able to make good science and do good work uh, with uh, new technologies. Um, but in order to use those new technologies, we need to minimize what barriers there are to the adoption of new tech that could make our work more efficient. And so that requires knowledge. And so we see that in terms of training, in terms of making people who have, um, keep providing places for overlap between scientists who want to use the new technology and people who have a technical understanding of how it works. And then some policy interventions to ensure that what efficiency gains we manage to achieve um, convert themselves into carbon savings rather than higher usage. And that's policy around procurement and policy around how we um, manage the use of our digital research infrastructure. Um, we also have a view on electricity supply. So best practice would be 100% off-grid electricity supply for our digital research infrastructure. Uh, we realize that that's not a thing that is doable now, um, but we can make good work in terms of uh, how we put together multi-year power purchase agreements with clauses about renewable investment and um, making sure that as we, if we use green energy, that that's hopefully new green energy and not displacing somebody else's opportunity to use green energy. 
um, on-site renewable generation be great uh, with grid connected power storage and grid scale battery storage as well um, so that where possible um, we can store energy um, and use it at times when the grid is particularly highly carbon intensive. Um, so from estates, we'll need to eliminate on-site use of fossil fuels um, and that requires a timeline and we hope to be able to have developed that by 2025. Um, in our report, I think the estates use of fossil fuels is kind of relatively small, but um, fairly something that we can, that is within our control. So um, should be something that is doable. In terms of procurement of equipment and services, um, we want to be able to empower institutions to invest in, so that their investments in efficiency can be balanced against uh, investments in um, energy intensive infrastructure. So that's at the moment, there's sustainability clauses in procurement contracts and consideration of the whole life cycle of equipment. So we can extend the life of equipment that we use and also consider um, how it might be reused in the future. Uh, we touch on travel um, and how digital collaboration tools, for instance, such as Zoom, um, can be used to reduce the carbon intensity of research programs. That requires us, I think, to be able to have some method of um, having metrics to establish what difference all of our meetings that can happen in the virtual space um, are able to make in terms of displacing um, emissions. And then finally, um, unavoided emissions. I mean, we need to touch on this because um, uh, there will be some emissions that we haven't been able to displace with renewable sources, um, and, but we need to exhaustively explore what we can avoid at all stages. Um, so for the moment, we can consider offsetting as a way of doing that, um, such as tree planting and restoring peatlands. Um, but these has problems in terms of the longevity of those solutions. Um, A, in terms of the companies that provide those services, and B, in terms of the sustainability of the, um, the carbon capturing uh, resource itself. For instance, if you capture carbon by growing trees and then those trees burn, they release the carbon. So there are, um, it's, it's a useful thing to do, uh, but it's not a long-term solution. Long-term would be sequestration of carbon dioxide in geological reserves, but right now that's expensive. And um, I don't think it's, it doesn't scale right now, but that's a uh, new technology that will um, have to play a part in the future. In the medium term, there's things like biochar, which is essentially creating charcoal and then burying that in the soil. Um, and it can be made with the byproducts of agricultural processes, such as the growing of sugarcane, um, things that have a high cellulose content. Um, and uh, that's useful, but I think there will also be challenges there in terms of um, other uh, entities that have a view on using those resources, such as for fuel for airlines. But anyway, we need to couple, it's a big challenge, but we need to couple investments that we make in the carbon removal projects uh, with research into their sustainability. Um, and then finally, finally, we can re wield impact. And one way of doing that is um, by having uh, climate and biodiversity impacts reflected in the way we manage grants. So how do you use a report? Um, 
you can read individual sections. Um, you can look up things that you're interested in, or you can start at the top and work your way down. But it's something that you should be able to dip into at different stages to find out about what we've discovered about different areas within the report. Um, it's, it's citable with the DOI, it's on Zenodo. Um, the report, this is just an interim stage. There'll be more areas covered in our final reporting and more depth as well. And we provide a glossary and we're keeping going with that to help make the technical terms clearer and also revealing where there's some terms that just seem like they're a piece of English language, but it turns out that they mean something specific within uh, this area. So you know what's next in the project? There's your feedback today, which we will consider for our prelim preliminary reporting in December, no, January, beginning of next year. Um, and that's bringing together as well, recommendations from the different groups who we funded through our sand pits. Um, there's also a series of workshops being run by Go Zero. Um, that's happening um, this autumn. Uh, and that's getting views from stakeholders and people who use uh, digital research infrastructure and who run it. Enthusing the community to meet the challenge of net zero. We're also a session at Computing Insight in Manchester at the beginning of December. Oh, and we're um, about to commission some art to uh, design and make some artwork that can be used to convey some of the challenges of net zero. Um, there's 25,000 pounds of funding available the deadline for that's quite soon. Um, there's various tweets and a blog posts that we've written about that, uh, which uh, hopefully we'll share there very soon. Questions? Do you have any? Thank you, 